50th anniversary of the Rainbow Gathering. Ooh, we love you! Welcome to the Rainbow Family Gathering, an unsanctioned festival that happens every summer where thousands of hippies flock to a remote location deep in the forest to build a commune from nothing. The Rainbow Family is not a typical commune where a group of people live together full time. It's like a temporary village that gets built and torn down in the span of a few months, culminating on the 4th of July with a giant meditation for world peace, followed by a wild celebration. There are no tickets, no money, and no rules. Everything is free and based on a barter system. At its core, the Rainbow Family is an anarchist organization. But what I would come to discover is this event is anything but organized. What began in 1972 is still happening to this day, and a handful of the original Rainbow Family are still alive. They met at the first Rainbow Gathering in 1972. And we haven't aged at all. I've heard about the Rainbow Family before, but as I began researching, Searching this, I came across a lot of mixed reviews. Thousands of people are expected to show up and illegally camp on national forest land. So what's the truth about the Rainbow Family Gathering and who exactly is the family? I have to find out. So I'm headed to Colorado to experience this historic event and hopefully get some answers. But I am not about to do this alone. We are on the way. This is rich. Rich is an OG hippie. What is your claim to fame in your hippie career? I lived in a commune. What kind of commune? It was a cult. <laughs> I was in it for like 35 years. It was Razney's Purim. Guys, Rich was in Osho's cult. If you haven't seen Wild Wild Country, you need to watch it. It's one of my favorite documentary series of all time. That's legendary. Oh. <laughs> he still has the memorabilia. Uh, everything in wild, wild country is 100% true. Everything. Also joining this adventure is my friend Alex, who happens to be my little from our sorority in college. From Zeta Tau Alpha to the Should rainbow. The crown? And the Zetas wear the crown. We make them all bow down. Never take an electric car on a road trip. guiding us to our final destination. Oh my God. Are you nervous? A little bit. You're a lot rich. of law enforcement. They're getting ready. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And just as Rich feared, we got pulled over for speeding, even though Rich seems to be incapable of driving over the speed limit. It turns out they just wanted to search the car for drugs. Luckily, they gave us a warning and let us go. But this is a prime example of the law enforcement's presence at Rainbow Gatherings year after year. Because the Rainbow family holds the gathering on national forest land, this is technically illegal to do without permits. So every year, the forest guard shows up strong. And depending on the state where the gathering takes place, it can get ugly. Luckily, being in Colorado, where the first ever rainbow gathering took place in 1972, the forest guard seems to be here just to keep an eye out and make sure everyone is safe. Oh, and to take everybody's drugs. It's been an adventure. We haven't even gotten there yet. No, we almost got busted. Uh, this is it. Welcome, Rainbow. I wonder if that's the official sign. It look very official. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about this is official. We've arrived. It's raining, but there's a double rainbow. Yeah. If you don't like hiking, don't come. If you don't like mud, don't come. If you don't like getting a little down and dirty, don't come. With the sun going down quick, we were on a time crunch to make it by dark and set up camp. Do we need information? Do we know where we're going? When we finally arrived at the unofficial, official info desk, Rich, who was a total champ the entire hike, was elated to be at his first rainbow gathering. I'm 71 and this is my life's dream to come to the rainbow gathering. And now it's being done. Let's go, Rich. Here we are. 
Rainbow Gathering 2022 expectations versus reality. How the hell did we make it here? 14 hours later. <laughs> it's cold out here. I can see my breath. We need to get our rest so that we're fresh to meet all the Rainbow family yeah. tomorrow. Day one. Rich, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How'd you sleep? Not very well. <laughs> the drumming kept me awake all night. It's a scene out here. I mean, oh, there's just like constantly yelling. Look who we found. Yeah, Yo, here I am. Hi, Rich. Yeah, we're here at the Mandela City Manifest Camp where we're trying to build a network of communities where we can live. Kind of like this, Rainbow Gatherings, but maybe more permanently. I'm a complete newbie to the Rainbow Gathering and okay. you are experienced. What is your biggest piece of advice? Eat as much food as possible. <laughs> I'm on a food tour right now. I'm going from one camp to the next, just trying as much as I can. What is the best kitchen you've experienced thus far? Instant soup. Where we're going now? We're going there. We're going there. So many tents all around in these woods. There's camps, How and it goes. It, go? it took us like 30 minutes to walk back there. I quickly realized that using my camera at the gathering was a bit sensitive, so I had to be as respectful as possible and do my best to ask for consent before filming people. It became clear that documenting this experience would require a lot of intention and communication. So this is the perfect time to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes with a wide variety of topics aligned with so many of my passions, from video creation to sustainability sustainability and self-care. As a documentary video creator, I loved this class called Document Your Life, Four Methods to Live More Intentionally, taught by one of my favorite creators, Nathaniel Drew. It really helped me approach documenting my life in a more mindful and intentional way. The methods he taught in this class have helped me stay present and have more fun when documenting experiences like this, both with vlogging and journaling. Skillshare has such a wide variety of classes to choose from, so if you're wanting to learn a new skill, there's most likely a Skillshare class for you. The first 1,000 of you to sign up through my link in the video description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. The way that the Rainbow Gathering is set up is there are different camps scattered for miles throughout the forest that build makeshift kitchens where volunteers cook all day and night to feed people for free. This is instant soup, but it doesn't seem like the process is very instant. <laughs> it's not. There's a lot of love and energy that goes into this. I've seen hundreds of mouths get fed at this kitchen. So right now we are on our way to the main meadow where apparently a group of the elders from the Rainbow family are going to be sharing some stories. So I'll tell you about the 72 gathering when I was 22. I was a hippie that had gone to Woodstock in 69, three years earlier. That changed my life and I was looking for the next step on my path and that was in 72 at this Rainbow gathering. It was in some ways even better than Woodstock for me. The original Rainbow was just like it is now. It was very inclusive. We We've always had people of every persuasion in the family. We did a lot of chanting and singing. You still hear some of the, the chants today, but that's how we amused ourselves. This was a real unifying thing. This rainbow thing's gonna keep going. You youth gotta take over. This is your responsibility. But you know what gives me hope and faith more than anything? It's the rainbow family of living life in love. So I want your generation to take it. You're how old again? 27. 27. Yeah. So you're going to be 77 at the 100th anniversary. i most likely be dead. But here's the thing that I tell all the rainbow. I'm an awakened being. And when I die, I want to be in an awakened state. Then I want my spirit so not to go to the light. I'm needed here. I want to come to a rainbow gathering. And I'm going to come into two beautiful loving beings that are loving and have, are going to be a baby. And I'm going to come back as their baby. <laughs> so when I look at these younglings, I go, oh, you make a good mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to be uh, the mom of his <laughs> next soul? I am undecided. <laughs> <laughs> Save the earth! Save the earth! Do what you can! Do what you can! Spread love through the land! I've been to about 30 gatherings, eight or nine nationals and the rest regionals. During Vietnam, I was in the Coast Guard. It was started for, in some ways, for veterans. Front gate 
were the hard-drinking veterans who had gotten back from Vietnam. And the hippies in the back were taking care of the Vietnam veterans. And that's what the early 70s were like. I would say that every kind of person shows up at the Rainbow Gathering. Every kind of religion, every kind of political and socioeconomic alignment. And it's a time when we set aside our differences. And it doesn't always happen without conflict because we don't all agree on any one thing. We're not coming here because we have one belief system. But it is it is rustic. It's very rustic. Not for the bougie hippie. No, no, it's, it's not glamping by any strat. It's hardcore camping. And hardcore camping means going to the bathroom in the woods. So if you're not cool with shitting in a hole, just don't come. I'm still like undecided about how I feel in general about this whole thing. I'd say this is the most hardcore hippie scene I've ever seen in my life. This event is all walks of life. Any socioeconomic status, I'm pretty sure there's quite a bit of homeless people here. You're definitely getting the full rainbow here. I would not recommend this to just anybody. You really gotta be open to experience. What's your perception of this so far? It's a very much choose your own adventure. It's fascinating. There's a lot of very unique perspectives and weird conversation points going on. I feel honestly like my brain is like overloaded with weird information. How are you feeling, Rich? <laughs> I'm doing great and loving it. Just taking a little break. At sundown, it was time for the dinner circle, where everyone gathers in the main meadow for free food. Oh, and free hugs. Free smiles, positive energy. Hugs anyone wants one. Does anyone want a hug? Welcome home. Welcome home. Loving you. Loving you too, brother. It was beautiful to see such kind souls feeding people for free. I couldn't help but be a little concerned about the overall sanitation situation. Knowing that people getting sick has been an issue at past gatherings, my appetite was quite small. But others seem to be loving the food. Dude, I love this kind of food. Rainbow food is my fucking favorite. <laughs> the Thai noodles did look pretty good, so I decided to give them a shot. Mmm, it's really good. I'm a big fan. I'm proud. Wow. It just amazes me how they're cooking all this food in the forest. Take on the magic hat. You know that no way to the magic hat parade. If you've never seen it or you just got here, this is how we collect donations to buy fruit. I learned that the only time money is seen at the rainbow is for the magic hat, which is actually just a bucket used for donations that help to provide the kitchens with food and supplies. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Magic hat! What are we doing now? Next, we serve the Kool-Aid. What's in the Kool-Aid? <laughs> Just love. Are you gonna drink the Kool-Aid? I don't know. Maybe I'll let you try it first. <laughs> Looking for the door, trying to leave this ride race consumer. For 50 years, the rainbow tradition on the 4th of July has been a collective vow of silence, starting at sunrise and lasting until noon. But as we made our way to the main meadow for the festivities, it was apparent that not everyone was participating in the silent prayer. Shut up. Go, go away. You go back. I am home. This is my home right here in the woods. You don't live here. You don't live here. You live somewhere in a city, motherfucker. So fuck off, I am home, you are not. Luckily, some people went over right away to defuse the tension. I felt it was best to not amplify the situation with my camera, so I headed to the meadow, where ironically, the Rainbow family was gathering for their annual meditation for world peace.
At first glance, it's easy to judge this stereotypical scene of hippies holding hands and oming. But as I witnessed this historic tradition take place, I began feeling a deep sense of connection to the original hippies of 1972, who started this tradition for a reason, for a purpose. They were fighting for something back then, for peace, freedom, equal rights, and a better world. And the path they led continues on to this day. Although the failures and shortcomings of the counterculture seem to linger 50 years later, that day in the meadow, it became clear to me that hope is not lost because here they are still standing for something. We create this field of energy that is noticeable and that energy is just it's how we treat one another there's a timelessness in this field that we create i mean this is a place of welcome a prayer for peace in the world we are all family the family is the one wearing the belly button if you uh, have a belly button you're part of the rainbow family is this what you expected? Yes, it's exactly what I expected. Rich, how are you feeling about leaving? I'm gonna miss this place. It was an adventure, memory of a lifetime. Right, Alex? No, I'll never forget this, truly. One of the wilder things that I've done in my day. What are you <laughs> yeah. Me too. Now it's time to head on out. Okay? Yep, yeah. now it's time to get the f out. Yeah. We spent a total of three full days and four nights at the gathering, and by the end, we were all pretty rainbowed out and ready to return to Babylon, as the rainbows say. Although there were many aspects of the gathering that tested me, by the end, I understood why this event has been so meaningful to so many people for 50 years. In all honesty, this experience was probably a one and done for me. I do not think I will go back again, and I don't necessarily recommend it to anyone, but if you do decide to go, whoever you are, you will be welcomed with open and loving arms. Easy,